So obviously you've started. Make sure there's no hold the order. Six p. Recording. We are on. Yes. All right. And we don't. And just make sure to speak clearly, because I think we're only on that mic again tonight. And they're uh, taking notes for us again. Yes. Good. So we'll just identify ourselves. Tom Pendergast, I'm the chair. Chair Dino Barney. Jerry Nakowitz. Herb Durfee, Community Development Director, or whatever I am. And welcome back, Jerry. Welcome and welcome back. Thank you. Uh, number three, emergency evacuation rules. Uh, we can go back the way we came, or we can also go out this back door. Um, number four, approval of the minutes. So we are not a quorum, so we cannot approve the minutes for tonight. So we'll hold that to the next meeting. Did everybody get a chance to at least see them ahead of time? No? Okay. There should be, I don't know if there's a copy. You have a copy of the minutes there? Should be. You do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you could take a look at them. Yeah. So I believe we're on the table, Mike, now. You don't have to scream. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, okay. So that uh, moves to... Uh, Hopefully we can get through this in pretty significant, pretty simple order tonight. Um, not too many things on the docket, but um, number five, organizational items. So um, we're going to talk about five and six tonight. Uh, one was a mission statement, uh, which I put together. See what you think. We should talk about it. And then number six, old business. Uh, we talked about uh, what. Um, Herb had called a trigger list. So I took a shot at a trigger list again, um, and we'll get to that. So what is a trigger list? It's something that would say, should we be looking at a specific thing or not during this commission? So um, number five, uh, 5.1, I wrote, uh, Coventry recognizes that human action can irreparably, how's that, harm the environment and our policies and actions are intended to protect and repair our natural environment. That actually came from um, the Environmental Council of Rhode Island or uh, other conservation commissions. Any comments on that? Do we feel comfortable with that as a mission statement for ourselves? Can you say it again? Yes. Do you have a copy of it? I, and, um, I, I don't see it. Keep going. Oh, there, there we go. go. Mission. Coventry recognizes yeah. that human action can irreparably harm the environment, and our policies and actions are intended to protect and repair our natural environment. Is it adjustable in the future, or is this the mission statement that gets approved and it stays that way? Um, it's our mission, so I would think we can change it as okay. long as we're continuing to improve it. Okay. So at least we'll have a, I would say at least we have a mission statement, yeah. and then we can adjust it as we go forward, especially if we start looking at certain items that uh, maybe expand or change that. All right. Are we good with that? Just at least to start? All right. Yep. Um, old business. So for discussion, it's a continued discussion on the, um, the thresholds or uh, what I was calling the trigger list. So I put a trigger list together. Uh, if you had a chance to look at it, great. If not, we can discuss it. We don't have to completely agree on it, but I think it's a good way to kind of kick off what are the kinds of things that we might be looking at in the future. So I put it, uh, the triggers under three main areas, water, buildings, and wildlife. And if we see other major topics that we want to talk about or deal with, we can add that to it. Um, water triggers, I put anything related to wastewater projects, stormwater projects, sewer development locations and plans, and impacts, any impacts to drinking water and wells. So what do you think about water triggers? What am I missing? What needs to be changed or what's added. a what's a wastewater project? 
I would say our number one wastewater project would be a sewer project. So is it is is that encompassed in number three, which is sewer development locations and plans? Yeah, it could be. I hate redundancy when mm -hmm. I can avoid it. I I try to. Unless we're thinking there's any other wastewater aspect that we should be looking at. Wastewater treatment plants are located in West Warwick only, although there's one um, there's one at. Uh, uh, what's the name of the facility on 117? Uh, they have their own wastewater treatment plant. Oh, Asalone's. Uh, not, not it's that. well, he did that one, the private one off near Newsnack? No. Uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm talking about on 117, just before you get to West Warwick. Uh, what's the big uh, industrial project there? Uh, I don't, I'm. I can still say I'm new enough where I don't have that stuff memorized yet. <laughs> oh, I, I know. They have their own cross there every there. weekend. Yeah. Oh, they, have, they have their own there. They have their own tree. Now, is that in Co That's not in Coventry. Yeah, I it think is. that is. It's right on the boundary. Yeah, it's right on the boundary. Okay. So, so you might want to leave it for that reason, wastewater projects. Okay. Otherwise, it's, a, it's redundant. And then maybe somewhere down the line, if we ever do get sewers further out west, then we might need adjustments to that for pumping stations or things like that. Yeah. All right. Anything else we can think of? Do you want anything in here that for water triggers that would, you know, affect water levels like dams and stuff like that? Just thinking of a little recent history. Yeah, it could be a project where somebody wants to take a dam down somewhere or build a dam back up. Matter of fact, I had one just today because um, I met uh, the owner. Well, they say they're the owners of a dam at the end of Middle Dam Pond hmm. that fell apart uh -huh. a long time ago. Hmm. And he rebuilt it with stones. And he now did. because he rebuilt it, he thinks he owns it. Wow. So he kind of lets the water in and out when he wants to, but I haven't, uh, I only met his next door neighbor today. How many so, acre pond did he build? Well, it's contained. Uh, it's contained the, eight acres. Eight Middle acres. Dam Pond is eight acres. Wow. So we're eight actually acres. helping them with an association. Yeah. So they are yeah. now officially yeah. Middle Dam Pond Conservation Association. So that's why... It could be important down the line. I like that idea of, yeah. you know, dams, water levels, things like that. Yeah. As the gatekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> I do control some of that. I don't know if her knows that. Do you know, do you know that? I didn't know you were the official gatekeeper. I am the gatekeeper. Congratulations. At, on Lake Tioga, and I've been it for 10 or 15 years. And... Um, I work in conjunction with the police department and um, and DPW as to water levels, and we mm -hmm. also have a DEM mandated water level, right. low and high. Yeah. So um, cool. So it's probably a really good thing to put in that. I like it. All right, we're good there. Um, building triggers. Triggers. We talked about open spaces, development, uh, protection of forest blocks, and I I won't use the dreaded west term but um all to, all open spaces and protection of forest blocks which primarily in the western part of coventry um one thing that matt talked about but i added here is the use of new versus used buildings so if we have buildings that um, are vacant should we be thinking about that um i think herb what you said last month is well played is that we're not the gatekeeper of economic development in the town, uh, but there may be an opportunity for us to look at particular plans in relation to conservation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah, you, it's sort a, of, you sort of have that obligation under yeah. the charter anyway, you know, in terms of being uh, provided plans or the opportunity to look at plans and stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. now, I notice you don't list uh, alternate energy sources, solar, water, wind, as part of building triggers, you know, spe specifying those items versus just saying use of new and used buildings. 
And my personal opinion is that a new building, new commercial or industrial building should not ever be built without alternate energy sources and should never be approved. Personally, um, you know, all buildings that are commercial should, they're usually in spaces that have lots of sunlight, so they should be built to support solar panels. Well, and I think that would go along, I, I would agree with you, and I think that that goes along quite well with the comprehensive plan goals. I would think so. Uh, and anything that we decide upon that we want to work on, I believe should support the goals of the yeah. comprehensive plan. So I can add that, Jerry. It's just more, It's that one's not redundant. It just specifies it a little better. Uh, and then looking at plans, so I have um, started a process where I'm going to come in once a month and take a look at advanced plans uh, for, that the planning commission is going to be looking at. Mm -hmm. And using these triggers, uh, make some decisions about what it is we might want to bring over so that we can start to look at it. And then if you folks want to do that as well, we can rotate through that on a monthly basis. Um, if you want to come over as well, in addition to, and take a look at the plans, I don't think that that would be a problem. And then that would kind of guide us as to, well, based on the trigger that we have, that may be something that we want to take a look at here. And that actually one of the things we're looking at tonight um, is related to one of the triggers that we would have. So, uh, so then anything related to recreational development, uh, any public works development projects, uh, commercial review and residential review that might be triggered. I put in triggered based on our trigger list. And again, um, you good down there? Haven't heard from you yet. So. All right. <laughs> and it's these lists not necessarily set in stone, but a guideline for us to, to mm -hmm. use moving forward. Um, wildlife triggers, any wildlife habitat loss, um, Aquatic invasive species management, Canadian goose management. The last two very important for us lake owner are us lake livers. What else on the wildlife perspective? If, if so, sorry. Don't be sorry, Jerry. Just be great. Canadian, <laughs> Canadian goose management. You really should be talking about all uh, resident waterfowl that don't belong here that stay swans for instance uh, is a, and it's a huge polluter to water water columns in the state and sometimes you have an abundance of them right now in lake tioga we have two but we've had years where we've had 10 and 12 those puppies produce an awful lot of waste into the water yeah. column uh so i don't think you should limit yourself to just the the, the geese Okay. You know, it should be waterfowl. Waterfowl I, I, management. I know I'm probably uh, like nickel and diming it, but it's it's more inclusive. What else on the wildlife side? I just mentioned um, flora slash fauna that's on the Rhode Island DEM threatened or endangered list. Mm -hmm. They have such a list, don't they? So they do. I'm, I'm kind of Vermonting in my mind right now. So <laughs> they go out there and get the list, but yeah, yeah. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen it, but okay. okay. Um, and then I put in um, kind of a support list. So a trigger list of what to look at, support list uh, that we would like to preserve open spaces and forest blocks. Um, that we would like to manage stormwater and its impacts to lakes and streams, uh, sustainability projects, resiliency projects uh, for me in particular, resiliency around controlling flooding and things like that, um, reduction of septic and cesspool runoff, wild uh, waterfowl management, 
which is probably a duplicate, is a duplicate, or protected wildlife species. So to you, Herb, you're talking about that. Comprehensive plan goals. So anything related to the, I don't know, we'll probably end up with 50 goals or so when we're done, uh, something like that. So comprehensive plan goals that we can have listed and use them as a guideline going forward. Um, any recreational and historic sites and uh, combating global warming. You got a lot I of think work. That's a it. decent start. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just you know, there's some good triggers in here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So but it's worth starting with. Yeah, we'll consider it a start. Yeah. We can manage it, you know, going forward, and you know, revisit it each month if as we need to. And um, I, I look at your trigger list, and I think about it as a, almost like a, a intuitive way to look at a set of plans, look at a development, and go through. Does this affect oh, this one? This check, one, check, 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 check. check. Yeah, it's yeah. a really good way to avoid skipping something that might be important that you didn't think about when you were looking at, you know, a plan. And it's it's a it's a good tool, you know, to set this into a into a checklist form. And every time we have a plan, check, 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 check. It's a it's a great way to lock and load. Most things will be not applicable to a, a plan, but there may be something that we'd miss if we don't if we didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll move off six point one um, and new business for tonight. And two two items for tonight. So the first one was a set of plans at the Rice City Estates. So um, wanted to spend a little time taking a look at that and get your thoughts. I, you have, and I do have the file here. So if you care to look at the larger plan, like that's it. And then in in your pack, there are the two of the sheets, the existing conditions, and then the generally the proposal. So can I make a first impression when I saw this and just to get things started? So I wondered to myself, why a developer would create, well, I'm looking on the page where the three lots are. So this is, this parcel will be served by Wells and Septic um, it needs permits for wetland, a preliminary determination application for wetlands. It needs a wetlands, it called it insignificant alteration permit and an RIPDES permit, which is a disposal plan of some kind, I think. Um, and it says that the parcel is not, parcel is not located within groundwater protection area yet. Each one of the three lots, if I was to look at the plan, I'd have to say at least 75% of the square footage is in an area of mucky peat with a high water table depth of zero feet. So to me, and I'm not a planner by trade, but I look at this and I wonder since there's a limit of five acres or so, um, for the house lots, is that they're using the wetland to get past the minimum amount of no, acreage? No, or? the um, the wetlands like this are discounted uh, in the calculation for the num for the number of units that they can put out there. So so essentially, you have one, two, three, four, five, six six house lots that are out there with uh, the minimum the minimum lot size has to be five minimum of five acres. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the calculation for when you look at the parcel as a whole, if if it didn't have any wetlands, in other words, everything was suitable for development, 
the total acreage could be divided by five, and that's in the conventional zoning, that's how many lots you could put in there, how many house lots you could put in there. Because they have a significant amount of wetlands, any of the wetlands and stuff is discounted from that. So with the remaining acreage that you have, you divide that by five, and that's how they, uh, more or less how you get to where they're at it. So they've, they've essentially, maximize the number of uh, building lots they can put out here. It has to be basically in a conventional zoning standpoint because there's really, the land is not really suitable to do any kind of clustering mm -hmm. because of the wetlands mm -hmm. and, and the need to discount those. Um, so that's, it, at least in this particular instance, that's why um, they've set it up the way that they have. I mean, clearly they're trying to maximize what they can do on the parcel. Um, but it is uh, limited by the wetlands. Oh, so the property line itself is not everything that it extends out to here. So each, so the property as a whole on the existing map, the property as a whole is all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then oh, which most is swamp. Right. So anything from the wetland, you know, that has the little marshy symbols yeah, on there. Basically, yeah. all of that is discounted out of the calculation. So the remaining portion, which is really that one soil type that's in there, is suitable for the calculation. So when you use the calculation, um, they can do the what the what did I say? Six units out here. So they can do the six lots. Each lot has to be no no. Uh, has More to be no less five. than five acres, yeah. which five, is uh, lot five. five, right? Everything yeah. else is okay. bigger. Um, and then <clears throat> I think as well, um, for two reasons, they've located the houses closer to Rice City Road because they're trying to stay as far away from the wetlands and wet, you know, I'm sure there's wet areas or higher water tables from there. Plus, the second reason is they don't want to have big long driveways because that adds cost to to the proposal for the development. Um, um, so I think it's a combination of, of economies of scale and trying to, to avoid the wet areas. Is that answering your question? It is, okay. thank you. Dina, what do you think? This is your passion. It looks just like my house. <laughs> <laughs> is your backyard a swamp? Uh, we have a ton of, we have bow and eagle woods. That is part of our property. It's not small. Yeah. Woods. <laughs> well, I guess this is wooded too. I actually looked at right. the picture. So it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, no, it looks exactly the same. We're three lots. I know this one is six, but we're three lots and it looks just like this. Mm -hmm. um, so it just seems like it's something that is happening all over Coventry. Yeah. This, I haven't done my staff report yet for this. It's sitting on my desk to, to do, <laughs> and I need to do it fairly quickly, but um, uh, were you at the Hopkins Hollow? Did you show up for that one? That, the room yeah, was full, so I couldn't write. Oh, no, no, yeah, no. no. Um, you gave it to us as a test. As just a te okay, so the actual um, hearing before the planning commission, the, the council chambers were full because of the Hopkins Hollow project. If you remember the one that I showed you guys last time, which was mm -hmm. sort of similar to this, but the former, was it the former Green Camp or... Um, uh, I can't remember what the former camp was, but it was a that was also a parcel that the land trust was very interested in obtaining, which they um, didn't move fast enough, obviously. But um, um, so there are a lot of neighbors in Western Coventry that were upset with a Hopkins Hollow proposal and remain so. I wouldn't be surprised to receive an, a, an appeal to that decision. Um, and I think that with the planning commission meeting coming up on in this month on the 28th, a lot of the same people are going to show up for this one and express a lot of the same concerns that they had. There, uh, I'm sure some of their that some of the neighbors that are here, at least within the abutters circle window, uh, which is usually fairly large, will show up. But I do know that other folks from Western Coventry that participated in the Hopkins Hollow will want to show up to this because I think there's been a little bit of a spark that has started where people are starting to be pretty concerned beyond just saying it, but wanting to participate to try to protect Western Coventry from 
too much extensive development. Um, and this is the kind of project that they find being meeting that sort of test or trigger of, of extensive development. Um, so I would not be surprised on September 28th to see the room full again because of this and it, and more non-neighbors, so to speak, adjacent, non-adjacent neighbors showing up to participate than Hopkins Hollow. Hopkins Hollow, there was a lot of the adjacent neighbors that were showing up as well. Um, so that's, that's just sort of a heads up from that standpoint that there does, at least in very recent past, there seems to be a little bit of initiation of some uh, folks that um, it, what I would call the typical folks that might start a, a, a concerned citizens group or something like that, you know, the, the Western Coventry citizens for mm -hmm. responsible growth, mm -hmm. right, something like that. So um, that, that's just a heads up on that. And the, and the issues that were raised at Hopkins Hollow were, you know, it's not necessarily in conformance with the town plan. Um, it's, it's a former camp. It's, it's intruding into the privacy of the area. There are some um, uh, traffic related issues um, on Hopkins Hollows Road. I think there was a fatality at a parcel, parcel or two away from that one on a steep curve. Um, there was some reports of some um, wildlife uh, I can't remember all the names, but uh, a type of hawk uh, piloted wood, uh, uh, the bar owl, barred owl, um, the piloted woodpecker, uh, obviously the, 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 the occasional deer and possum and skunk, you know, that sort of stuff. But I mean, some stuff that people raised specifically. Um, uh, again, concern of open space. Um, uh, I'm trying to think again. I'm I'm shooting this off the top of my head from from recollection from what showed up. But it was a good, again a good chunk of people that showed up, and I think those were sort of the salient issues that came out, which are not uncommon issues for projects like that in okay. terms of those that show up. And I think the same thing will occur here, where they'll say, you know, the road is fairly small and short. They they you know it has to be significant upgrades to the road. This is an intrusion into Western Coventry. Uh, there's a lot of wetlands around. It's near the uh, Audubon Society properties, um, um, among other things that will come up. All right. So from let me, so a learning moment, if mm -hmm. I could, sure. um, from a conservation commission perspective, mm -hmm. a trigger that would have said that we should be even looking at this this evening, I thought was the swamp. Mm -hmm. So is that a valid? Yep, absolutely. You, you, you to, have to get the, your list the, and say, tick, right. tick, oh, wait a minute, there's a swamp there. And right. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's great that you guys as a group are coming up with consensus as to what would be your trigger mechanisms rather than just, you know, putting the plans out in front of you and saying, okay, which one are we going to participate in? And mm -hmm. what's it going to be at that point that at least you're trying to funnel yourselves initially to say what are going to be the trigger mechanisms and then be able to focus on certain things but there is nothing that says that you can't do the other which is you know someone that basically you know any development that comes in we're going to participate in and we're going to push for that i mean you have the right to do that um but as as but as a collective of the group obviously you need to do it within the bounds of your you know rules of procedure and all that sort of stuff so um but i think that's the much easier and uh, more efficient way to um, deal with the issues that are of concern to you folks. And that is by putting it into like the checklist format of your triggers. I, I think that's a great way to deal with it. And you're perfectly right. Uh, you know, the significant number of wetlands may be a trigger, uh, Western Coventry sort of area, that may be another trigger. And depending on how many check somebody gets that might be I don't know how you would wait if it's just one check right. or if it's three checks or if then you start to say well these are the triggers but if it's this one it's weighted five points and this one's only two or something so you could even build in a yeah. numerical system if you yeah. wanted to I wouldn't get that uh, I wouldn't try that. to build objectivity yeah, yeah. into it I would just use your checklist and then have discussion among yourselves as to what defines your participation and the concerns that you have um, and thereafter kind of build that into your letter of participation that as is a recommendation to the planning commission okay yep 
So that would be the next step if we wanted to move would be a recommendation to say, we, we don't think that this should move forward because mm -hmm. of our one, two or three triggers that, yep. yeah. that or, we're or, concerned about. Right, or anything else that you might want to talk. I mean, it may be fine as you, it, you may come up with saying, well, we understand it's five acre zoning. The property owner has the right to do development on their property. Um, uh, but we think that six units is too many for this area, given the wetlands that are out there, it might be more suitable to do three or four or two or three, you know, what, whatever, something along those lines with a level of, I, I think you should have, at least in your mind, think about what are the findings of fact that you want to lay out on the table that justifies your ultimate decision or recommendation to the to the commission just, uh, to me just coming out and saying because there's wetlands here there shouldn't be development here uh, that's not going to that's not going to sell right i think that um it's kind of figuring out if there's going to be development out here because i mean given the current zoning this is fair game what they've put here okay so i think it's it's it, it the 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 current regulation enables this to happen. So if you're going to come in with a different kind of finding uh, from that standpoint, you should have that sort of finding being your justification to to um, to make the recommendation that you can. That's either there shouldn't be development here or something less than what's proposed, or if it has to go in, what might be some conditions that could be laid on the on any approval to protect those interests that you value as a conservation commission, open space, um, wildlife protection, some, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, any further comments on this? Yes. So, so I'm gonna speak first as a developer because sometimes that's important to look at this. There is nothing illegal that they're doing. Right. They're, everything is fully approvable. And if you were to put restrictions on this and say, I don't want it because uh, the planning board would approve it as is, you would have no, uh, you would have no shot at making a change. There is nothing wrong with this development at all, except the possibility of the road not being adequate, which it's already I'm being sure, addressed. Yeah. I'm sure there's yeah. an addressing of yeah. that, mm -hmm. but everything else is cut and dry. The soil types are fine. Paxton soils are good. Woodbridge is good. This is all okay. Uh, now, in my opinion, you might want to uh, attempt to put some restrictions on how far back the owners of these lots can go towards the edge of the wetlands. This person may want to develop all the way back to the perimeter wetlands and open it all up as a big field. Well, that's really not keeping with what the wildlife would be like. But when you look at the location, like Herb said, of the houses being up close because it's less expensive and driveways can be really expensive to do these kind of things, that you might want to ask for some restrictions on how close people can go to the wetlands. Maybe asking instead of the 50 foot perimeter wet, wetlands, asking for a hundred feet and asking for, and possibly also doing an easement so that people might want to be able to walk down to go to the, the wetlands. You don't know, I don't know, if there are any trails back through here that have been historically used. Uh, there's some of that information that's not available to us looking at this. But those things are within your purview as a, as a commission to ask for to say that this is not buildable because it's, there's too much wetlands. Well, I want you to just look quickly. This lot right here is five acres. It is entirely out of the wetlands. That is the requirement in that part of town for a five acre lot. So if you look at this one, similar, right here, similar, similar, smaller, smaller. These two, you could have some discussion about, but but they still meet all the requirements. So you, you wanna be careful in establishing a, a set of restrictions that end up 
not even keeping close with the planning department unless it's something that I don't recognize. No, keep going. So when I look at it, I'm going to shoot for things that I think are achievable and positive towards conservation, restricting development from the wetlands to 100 feet or giving an easement um, along the back, maybe between one, maybe this lot over here or these lots right here that have the, you know, they're in the middle and they've got a lot of area. Um, so I'm looking at things like that when I look at a set of plans. I, I can't say that my objective should be to stop development and stop the usage of somebody's property that wants to use it. Only thing I can see when I look at this closely, I looked at the soils, I looked at the slope. The slope is between zero and 8%, very easy to develop for single family lots. Driveways are, are more than comfortable with that kind of slope is the traffic existing on this road. And that is something I have no knowledge of. Little. Little. So, Little. so they would be able to refute that with a traffic engineer like that. Right. So you, you want to go you want to go with an approach that enhances our position, but doesn't try to stop the usage of property. And I'm not sure if I'm speaking out of turn. Not at all. It's somehow, that's how I look at development. Yeah. I don't look at it as my objective is to stop it. My objective is to get the best possibility that we can get to protect the environment and also end up with a good design for the people who are going to live here. To, to that end, some when we did the, uh, uh, this is the, must be the pre, yeah, the pre-application, my staff report talked about a, a number of things. And you, what I try to do when I do my review is I try to look at the regulations as a whole and look at it to say, what do they have to do as part of their development? So that during pre-application, I'm telling them up front, the things that I think that, that that are probably likely to come out of a future staff report once they get into the Great later way. stages Great like preliminary and all Perfect that. So there's no surprises. Right. So just from my perspective, this these are the things that I raised back in, um, uh, again, back at the pre-application, which is quite some time ago at this point, earlier this year. Um, um, Basically, I want to know whether there are any historic cemeteries out there and any identification of it. Usually they are, but um, we, we have Larry Menier, Men, Men, he's identified like over yeah, 200 right. uh, cemeteries. And there's a special book that was created for Coventry cemeteries that's over in the library. So learning about that, basically, I'm trying to factor in um, that, that the, the, the applicant should be letting us know whether or not there's a cemetery out there. And if there is one, make sure that it isn't one of our historic ones. Uh, well, regardless of whether it's historic or not, they need to do a buffer according to our right. uh, state statute. Um, um, I'm trying to, with regard to the comprehensive plan, you heard me say this last night, Tom, with a comprehensive plan, I really want a townwide um, uh, may, you might even have brought someone else brought it up before I did. I would like a townwide plan for paths, sidewalks, you know, pedestrian, non motorized type of thing throughout the town. And whether that's nodes, specific trails, whatever it is. In anticipation of that, um, and I'm used to doing this in a previous town that I worked for, is a development like this, um, if that plan was in place um, and there was a line that went down the road that said here's where we want to put a trail or whatever we would require the development to have a 15 foot wide non-motorized path or trail easement so we're not making them build it today but we're protecting the easement so in the future at some point when we do decide that we want to connect the audubon society with you know some other places in town we already have an easement so we don't have to argue with any property owners exactly. going along the way it's all good planning right so that's one thing that I've requested is a 15 foot non-motorized easement or path mm -hmm. to go ad adjacent the right of way. So um, there's no surprises to those that buy the property in the future. Um, I've wanted, I've noticed that there are some existing stone walls out there and I know that those are important throughout the state of Rhode Island. So I basically said they need to identify those and then where they can protect them as possible to protect them. Um, um, 
I'm just going through the ones that I would, let's see. Um, basically, um, I'm saying that there's no part of the project that appears to impact any natural and cultural resources identified in the comprehensive plan. As such, no environmental team review is warranted. An environmental team review is, is a provision in our zoning and subdivision regs that can be triggered if staff wants to have it. So in this particular ace, case, um, uh, I don't think it's warranted. Yeah, but this isn't but, the kind of property right. that would be have that. It's not like uh, going down by the coast where you've got yeah. some of the Indian artifacts exactly. because they would move up from the water and yeah. do the so exactly. It's not so, that but kind of property. But if there were something like that, that's the kind of thing that I would request as part of that process. Um, uh, one thing that we talk about that you're supposed to have in our regs, we've the I think the last few planning directors have kind of ignored it, but uh, we do have a street tree requirement mm -hmm. for any new lots that are created. Um, I'm also a fair person, so even though I can through our regulation say no, nope, you're supposed to have street trees out there. You're supposed <laughs> to have one every 40 feet. Well, it's wooded. Right. I'm a reasonable person. Go pick me out some trees on each of those lots that and protect them. Right. And if it's anywhere near the development, put some snow fence around the drip line and don't let the bulldozers run into them and don't compact the tree ball. And those can serve as, as your street trees during that particular process. Um, we, they, they're supposed to have a landscaping plan. Um, I did talk about, in addition to the 15 foot non easement there, I've talked about trying to do connectivity with the Audubon Society and encouraging them to talk to the Audubon Society to see if there's any need for, and if there can be any kind of connection to any trails that they may have or walking things, in other words, to, to, to again, to garner the public's use of those areas. So that fits right in um, uh, with what Jerry was talking about. And then, and that's and that's about it. I mean, this this is going to be an excitable project, probably with the folks that are going to show up. But um, there's there the to to sort of coin the phrase that Jerry said is that the person has the right to do certain things, and I think that they put it where they can, even though some people may not like it. The the owner of the property has the right to develop their property within the bounds of the regulation. So I like I like the perspective that Jerry takes. Um, but notwithstanding that approach, you know, there are, again, you can have, there's other opinions that you may have as a group that would say, you know, despite what Jerry is saying, I still think that even though the regulations allow this, this is too many housing units are out there. So again, with a certain level of finding of fact that you might be able to convince a planning commission, but I do agree with Jerry that the planning commission is kind of a, a board of unanimity when it moves forward with stuff that, you could ask for that stuff, but you might, if if you wanted to say this area would be better served if there was one or two less units out there. Um, you're at that point, yeah, you're definitely cutting into a developer's margin and the property owner's um, uh, um, profit from that standpoint. I I don't think this is affiliated with any farmer or something. Where I said like last night, you got to be careful when you talk about these kinds of things with farmers, farmer farming land, because farmland is the farmer's retirement. And so when someone comes in and says there shouldn't be any development on this right. property whatsoever, you're hitting that guy's livelihood for, you know, he's the one that worked from four o'clock in the morning until, you know, 10 o'clock at night, and then repeated it every six days after that, right? That that whole retirement is built into that. So you're immediately setting that lightning rod off for the emotional discussion from that standpoint, not saying you can't have that discussion, but you should be sensitive about something that is coming out of an agricultural use because of that retirement that's built into that. Have property. you, um, have you looked at any of the old aerials to see if you can pick up any trails? The, I had, no, I haven't done that, but I know, I, I know exactly where to go and how to do that to see if there's anything. Because, um, I mean, we've had growth in Rhode Island and for a long, long time, but if you can look back forty years, which mm -hmm. you, yep, you, can, you can, yep, and the the uh, and if you can see trails back there, you know that there's there's a little bit more validity to granting yourself access to it. Yep, yeah. Uh, I talked to question about it. I talked to Tom Cronin, who's the attorney representing yep. this. Uh, he's yeah, everybody's attorney around here. He's but uh, he, um, I had talked to he. About, to him about the possibility of trail stuff back there. And he said, 
from, you know, obviously he's carrying his client's perspective, but he's basically saying it is so wet back there yeah, you that it's, it, you, it's, it's not like it's just mm. seasonally squishy. And then the rest of the time it's fine, yeah. that it's, it's pretty wet out there and it really isn't conducive to, um, the, the trail type stuff and all that, or, the, there, or the connectivity over are there the walls pump. back in the middle of the wetlands. N not that I'm aware of. No, no, the, the any of the stone walls are kind along of the, on along the property yeah. boundary from that same, especially down in the, the I think this corner. Um, and uh, um, there's another area, there's another little section of it. So the, the, yeah, the DPW director is requiring them to build it to a class three gravel road, which is effectively widening it from what it is now. What is the width of this? Uh, it says it. I can't remember right now. Um, it is pretty narrow. Variable. Yeah, width. Um, but it would go to a, I think it would go to 20. I think it's 24 feet is the gravel three. 24 feet width. of gravel. Yeah. Drivable gravel. Yeah. So and then enough so, for a fire truck. so like two lanes yeah and, and then in a passing car and then he's asking them to build there's a big rock at the end here i mean technically this actually goes through all the way through as a public road but there's a big honking boulder that got planted there to make sure that didn't happen but, <laughs> so <laughs> so and w which is fine the way the way it is because you really don't want to drive a car anywhere past that boulder but the um the public works director is also requiring a little turnaround whether it's a y or a yep. Uh, T or something like that to be able to turn the plows around and would he and, uh, would to do that would he require being on people's property or is it town property? No, it should be should remain within the right of way. So I the mean, town. obviously, if you're asking them to go on person's yeah. property, that's no. a stopgap. No, yeah. So it's it seems to be within the the right the bounds of the right of way. And then of course, with our full time town engineer now, he'll make sure that it's engineered yeah. appropriately. So sorry, I've talked too much, but that I just wanted to give you some insight no. from what I've found out so far from my perspective. And I and I'm to a degree frustrated because I would love to be able to cluster these things. This is a big enough property yeah. where if this the wetlands weren't here, I would take all these and I'd plunk them here or plunk them yeah. there, wherever it is, protect the open space, blah de blah blah blah. The, Isn't it too the, bad? the wetlands itself precludes good planning from happening right not good planning but a different style planning but it is an exercise worth uh worth talking through absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so um does anyone on the commission see a need to bring anything up to the board at this time for when you say the board you mean the planning i'm sorry board? the commission the planning commission planning commission I... <laughs> In the past, I would have brought in the developer. I would have brought in Sammy Schwarzer. And I would say, Sammy, we really would like to see you make some environmentally sensitive decisions on this property. And we'd like you to go talk to your client because these are the things we'd like to see. And it would allow us to make a better decision on your property or your development. But from speaking to Ann Dixon the other evening, I gather that that's not an acceptable meth method anymore. No, that shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that. Shouldn't it's be. not, it's, I, I don't think it's, I think it's reasonable to ask Sam to come in and talk to you guys. And, you know, from the perspective of saying what, you know, what is the surveyor applicant preparer, you know, typically involved with what are the things that he might be receptive to in terms of that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think you could, you could ask him to present this sort of stuff. And I think you could probably say to him, Hey, we'd love to see you work with your client and doing this, but, but generally you don't want to do that here. You guys should come up with the ideas and then that's a direction toward the planning commission. Just, you you can, can look at Sam yeah. during that time frame, but, yeah. but <laughs> it just ends up taking the developer much longer because it now goes from here to there right. and back to, to here. What I would like to do as part of my process. So to, to, to the, the consolation answer for you is, <laughs> is uh, if you can wait a little bit, what I'm trying to do is get back to, a, to, to the way that I used to do it in a previous community, which is when we get an application in the door, once it's basically deemed complete, um, that department heads are given the notification that there's an application in the door. Department heads would include the conservation commission, the charter, charter designated. I think, I think the economic development commission, the conservation commission, maybe historic preservation, but at least those two. Mm -hmm. um, 
are by rights have uh, the access to a plan as part of the submittal that comes in. So if I had, what I like to do is have the department head meeting. The difference between most planners is that I invite the applicant and the applicant's engineer to attend that department Perfect. head meeting to say, what are the issues that you, you, know, you department heads have? Well, traffic, blah, blah, blah. The applicant's hearing it for the first Perfect. time, just like I am. And then we can work stuff out if they want, if they're willing to make change, hey, we'll make the changes or whatever. I can say, well, make the changes, get me the revised plans before such and such a date, and we'll slip them in the plans that have been submitted. And then Perfect. and then the only thing that goes to the planning commission are the areas where you agree to disagree. Right. So in other words, you funneled it down. So the planning commission is only talking about the issues that they need to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and that expedites the meeting usually. And then the other is it, you know, the unknown adjacent property owner that comes in that hasn't, you know, that has their perspective, but you don't know it until they walk in the planning commission's public hearing. Um, but that's the way that I used to do it. And then the, the written staff report that comes to the planning commission is actually in the form of the written decision. So it has the findings, has the conclusions of law and the conditions that, that relate to that. And then when the commission has its discussion, they should only, and, and the staff report that comes in already factors in where the applicant and, and we and the department has have agreed. The only thing that remains is that the staff report will say what it's gonna say, but those are the areas that the applicant disagrees on. Yeah. And so those are the points that you have. And then during the meeting, the discussion basically says, yep, we agree with staff on this or no, we're gonna tweak this condition to say this, um, or we're gonna add a new condition because of uh, Granny X that came in and said mm -hmm. she needs a fence over there, something like that. And then you have the action and at the end of the night, you have the written decision, basically speaking. Perfect. So that's Sounds good. That's the way I like to do it. And then- But this, so this commission would see it, it seems like we're seeing it way down the path now. This sitting commission would- We would see they, it they would, earlier. The they process. would have heart attacks if I did that to them. So if you did it to the- If I did that, yep. If I changed uh, up their okay. protocol from the way that they deal with it right now, they would all drop dead. <laughs> they can't handle it. They are true Catholics and Episcopalians. If someone is sitting in their pew when they come into the church, woo. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried, I've been, my very first meeting with the chair when I came on board was, Herb, how can we expedite this, these meetings? There's just, there's just, there's just things that I don't think need to go in here or whatever. I said, well, I'll give you a motion sheet so that all you have to do as a chair say, I'd entertain a motion to do ABC and then another member just has to go, so moved, right. rejected that. I've done it four meetings, I'm not going to do it anymore because they just won't do it. Um, get rid of the ratification process. We never used to do ratifications. Now we have to do it. It's What's a ratification? The board verbally approves their decision. And then we all wait 30 days. And then at the next meeting, they ratify the verbal decision that they did the night before. I guess, Mike, mm -hmm. I understand why. Uh, and that is there must have been an application that got screwed up from the verbal action approval to the written decision. And so therefore they basically said, we wanna see the decision before it goes out the door and ratify it. Um, I think if they can't, we, we, used to, we never used to do the ratification, but if they can't embrace that, at least say that the chair and the vice chair are authorized to review the written decision after their meeting. And then at least I can cut two weeks off the process. Yeah. Um, uh, and then the third thing was to, I tried to get them to entertain a consent agenda. So there's a number of items where it's a recommendation or whatever to the town council, or the zoning board or what have you. And it's usually written up and you could just take those four, five, six things, put them in a consent agenda, which means you only need to approve the consent agenda with a motion, not five or six for the individual things that are in there. And then that just cuts the time that goes into it. Uh, and that was rejected. So I was asked to do something and I guess I sat in their seat, their pew seats. So um, <laughs> I know I'm on the record for that. I know I'm on the record, but I'm just trying to have more fun than anything else. But the uh, I'm trying to do those sorts of things. I think the kind of thing that I would like to do in terms of that 
given my experience of the, of the simpler things that I've tried to do with them and not had much success to do a wholesale change to their entire processes, how they review and what they look at would create uh, freak attacks. Um, mm -hmm. So I think slowly over time, we can work yeah, toward that. And, um, and we'll, I'll continue to do what I can to try to expedite their process. But in the meantime, I think we'll stick with our existing process. Uh, the only other thunder that I'll let out is um, when I go through, once I get the comp plan far enough down the road, I'm going to start in on updating the zoning and the subdivision regs. And my idea is to have the town endorse a development review board uh, with some kind of a unified code. So you basically have one board that, so right now you have the zoning board that does all their zoning reviews uh, in a quasi-judicial uh, forum. And you have the planning commission that does the development plan reviews and the subdivision reviews again in quasi-judicial and a development review board that is all combined into one process. So you don't go to two separate boards. You don't go bing, 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 like a ping pong ball back and forth. You go to one board, they do all the review processes and you link your regulations as such so that it's a singular process that you go through. It's sort of like the comp permit yeah, it's, for the, the for the affordable housing. Ideally, system. that's that's great. But I would imagine there would be people that would have their feathers rough, rough, ruffled mm -hmm. in that kind of situation. And yeah, you know, and, and that that would be hard for them to deal with. Exactly. So that's again, yeah. that's a that's a plant a seed next month, put a little water on it. The month after that, put a little more water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And nope. see if it grows or if we have a drought. <laughs> True. Yeah. But those, but again, those are the things that I've experienced and can do. If the town's not ready to go there, that that's okay. Um, but I would, but I would, based on certain complaints or issues, or even lack of volunteerism, uh, uh, you know, bod literally bodies to do stuff. Those are the kind of things that can alleviate some of those issues. Yeah. So, enough of me. So, uh, do, do we want to recommend anything here based on everything that we learned in the past twenty minutes? I would love to. Okay, let's. But you heard what I wanted to recommend, <laughs> and it's. I guess that doesn't work anymore. So I'm not sure how you incorporate what I think might be important as a conservation commission to say to the developer. So I'm not sure. I think what you said could be would be kind of cool to be reduced in some kind of a. a document that could be submitted recommended to the planning commission to say we recognize there's not you know the developer has the right to do the development as property our job is to kind of protect as much of the open space as we possibly can we're interested in you know we we just to toot my horn you know we sort of embrace what the town planner is going to be recommending with regard to an easement along there for future possible uh, uh non-vehicular traffic type of issues we would like to see if if it's if there are any existing trails out there, we'd like to see uh, some public uh, connectivity to that through kind of a path or an easement. Um, um, and uh, I, um, I'm trying to think of the so how, things. how do we work on a statement like that if we're not supposed to be working outside of this? I think road? you have right. I know, and that's what's hard. It's either either you got to do it, you know. Th and again, this is sort of I think you're sort of evolving through your committee meetings and all that in terms of how you're going to get there. But I think for the issues for tonight and given the hour where you're getting at, um, it, it might be authorizing Jerry to draft something, you know, on behalf of the group to, that could be submitted um, and uh, or uh, a couple of you could work on it. I see it as long as you're in a non quorum environment, um, a couple of you could work on something. Um, but the 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 um, again, it's going to have to be, you know, sort of authorizing somebody to act on behalf of the commission, because if there's one person that goes in, they're going to have to have the authorization of the commission as a whole to talk on behalf. Otherwise, if you went in and you didn't have that authorization, you're going in there as a private citizen. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, I, I would, I would never do what you just said. I would never go into the planning board right. and represent myself as Oh, it's part of the commission. commission. No, I just no, wouldn't no. do it. Yep. I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. And unless there was the action right. authorized. I think the, the, the right. way 
historically we always did it is we looked at a plan i love the idea of a checklist i think that is such a cool way to go through yep. things yep. Uh, the only thing you're missing is other the last thing other um, well i think that other over time will kind of <laughs> yeah as well, right, um, right. Uh, <laughs> that's and we would write a document to the planning board so could i propose that um, you take a crack at it. You and I go back and forth with it because <laughs> yeah. it is my first. Is less, than a, less than a quorum is working on it. If you and I do it, yeah. if the three of us agree that that's a path that we want to take, yeah, and then we could um, submit sure. it on behalf of the entire commission. Mm -hmm. Sure. I generally write pretty technical, so it's like almost like bullet. So I'm not a flowery writer. Uh, just. So yeah. here, here are the concerns right. we have as right. a commission, and is what we'd like to see. Three, four, five, and, yeah, yep. And that, and if you're okay with that, that's how I like to write it. And yeah, I'll be glad to do that. Okay. And uh, uh, should yeah. we send it back on official email? It should go back and forth uh, official uh, email. Um. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, I would okay. definitely, and and you pass it back and forth. Obviously do it such that you know that whatever you're typing is likely to be a public is a public, document, a public document and could be called yep. up at any time yep. that's the way i operate yep. my whole life so whatever i type even if it's to my wife on the computer here it's like someday someone's going to see this in public you know so better not say what i want to say right <laughs> you know, but right. that's but yeah so that's always anything that you do always treat that at some point it's going to end up in discovery yeah, and then and then course. then you can sleep at night first of all, and you're not afraid uh, for what you've. If someone sees it, who cares? Here yeah, you go, cares. right? So, and we should have something together way before the 28th. Is that yes? Yeah, so, yeah, the packet. Um, I don't have a calendar, but the packet will go out the Friday before the meeting. The meeting's on the 28th, so I can't count backwards yeah, that way. But off, so. oh, I have it right now. um so the packet will go out the 23rd um so what would be nice is if you might get it if we have it in the next i'd say get next, it by next wednesday to gail or, or me or yeah. whatever yeah okay whatever your form whatever you want to have included in the i mean if you get something done yes it can be included in the packet but there's nothing that says that if you guys come up with something this group could authorize tom or jerry or or dina to show up and just present the the thing to there you're really not there to debate it but to say i mean you don't want to go that route because that's the same thing that's a really right. dangerous yeah. spot yeah. but but i'm you not going to be the guy who does that so no but i'm just saying you could job, offer it you could happens. you could enter it in that yeah. night to say here here's the, but the, the stuff yeah the planning board if i submitted it like that would say so so jerry right and then you're on unless you're going to say based upon advice from my counsel i'm not going to speak this year <laughs> i mean right. right that's crazy stuff no and and that's fine and, and and again unless the board this group you know authorizes the person to make such presentation and offer anything else but usually what it is is that a group will say we authorize you to present that and offer anything that the group has adopted you know and but nothing else because it's too easy to come in and say well this is what the commission thinks but my personal thought right. is this right I, and I smooth it again. Oh. it's you know the slippery slope oh. comes right out really quick you know um okay. yeah how how does the document get signed i write it it goes out to the three of us mm -hmm. does it get i used to sign it this way um from conservation commission mm -hmm. and i didn't put any signature at all yeah you could yeah that's fine yeah just that say by the conservation commission yeah. and then just put the three the four excuse me the four names right that are there i mean matt's not here so right. i would at this point i would at least just put the three names okay yeah, yeah. Okay. Or, you know you could put matt but you know in absenteeum or whatever that what's you know the word probably yeah. so yeah she's an attorney by trade so an environmental attorney no. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so moved on. But I could say I'm vice of my council. <laughs> I mean, we have some validity with that statement. No, seriously, he told me not to say yeah. that. 
Is it? I, I just want to ask, Dina. So when you came on originally, you know, a lot of your interest for coming on was that you were that property owner that was adjacent to something else and didn't know the process and you learned some lessons along the way that you would like other folks to sort of understand. I mean, is this helpful? Do you feel that why you're here is being accomplished in some fashion or another through this discussion? Or are we blindsided? We had no idea this development of 32 houses was going right next to us. Mm -hmm. and ultimately, it doesn't really affect me because it's not affecting our property. It affects our neighbor kind of more than us. And they decided not to speak up about anything. Um, but I just was totally surprised by the whole thing. I had no idea mm -hmm. until it was happening. Yeah. And um, like I said, it doesn't, it's not affecting my property, but all day when I'm working from home, the two days I work from home, I have to listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All the construction going on. And it's a little sad just seeing the amount of um, it is sad. Trees and, and whatnot. That's a good that chart. I mean, but I totally understand it. It's their property and they can build and right. make money and do whatever they want with it. But it's kind of sad driving by and seeing the amount of land yeah. that was cleared that before when you drove by before it was cleared out, you know, you wouldn't have thought there was so much space there. Okay. Um, and now it's it's crazy to see the amount of space yeah. that was cleared out. You're right. So that is the sad part when you're in a neighborhood and like this right here. So if you can do a good job working with the planning board and the conservation commission to get a good development that's not overly, um, you don't let somebody come in and just strip the land. Right. They protect the, the that's protect there. There's the there's too many developments that just take right. it all down. Yeah. And yeah. there's a couple of them that I can name, but I'm not going to on the record. Luckily, so, the soil yeah. here, the soil here isn't worth developing as uh, gravel because if it was. Uh, you would strip this whole thing. Mm. You'd strip it all. You'd strip it right down. Yeah. Trust me. There's no doubt about it. But it's not good soil. So they're not going to do that. And, you know, it's, although you could get a, a tree developer to come in there and strip it for the for the wood, if it's all hardwood, if it's all oak and maple and ash, you could get somebody to come in and do that. So, you know, those are the kind of protections that as a yeah with the ash you might, you might as well go in and cut down all the ash because yeah. if you don't the emerald ash borer is going to do it yeah. for you so right. yeah anyway. all right um i'd like to move on to 7.2 if i could uh and i brought something to back that up so uh 7.2 is uh i found out that we have a budget and that we could use money for particular purposes so um i'm proposing that we join um, the Environmental Council of Rhode Island, the cost is about $200. So I think it's way less than what our budget is. And what I did was I brought their mission statement so that you can take a look at it. Uh, there are a couple, the, the list of people, of associations that are members is too long to bring. Uh, we don't have to make a decision tonight. Uh, you can go back and take a look at the Environmental Council of Rhode Island yourself and see whether or not you believe that it's a, an institution that we should be a part of. Uh, I did quite a bit of looking um, on the site, and I thought from an idea perspective and an understanding of what other groups are finding important about conservation, it was valuable to me. Uh, there's the, only one side. The other side is a um, just a calendar that didn't print. Right. Oh, so it's it's only this mission. Are, are there any uh, local towns? Boroughville is Boroughville, but nobody nearby us. No others that I saw. But you could take a look at the list. Um, there are several river councils that are part. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of asso lake associations that are part. Mm -hmm. uh, there's. The Women's League is a part. There's, I mean, there's a varied number of participants, and it's a long list. Okay. Yeah. Be glad so I would say that. that we um, take a look at the yeah. at the site and um, come back with a recommendation next month. You know what the website is? Uh, I see it at the bottom. You have to type in that whole thing. Yeah, so if you just put in Environmental Council of Rhode Island, you'll see it. Yeah. Up, up. 
Okay. Okay. Um, future agenda items. Anything on people's minds that we want to consider for a future meeting? I would love, love to be have us have our fingers in sewers. I, I know it's a, I know it's a hot button for me. Yeah. Um, it's just it is one of the most environmentally helpful things that that a town can do in a developed area. Uh, I can't even think of another thing that's more valuable. I can't even think. I can't even come close. You're uh, aware of what the town's doing right now, aren't you? I'm trying to stay aware. So they're they're going through and updating that facilities plan again right, for 2017 got it right got to do that i guess i'm, I'm more of a like once we I, I don't like to be a planner forever i like to get into implementation at some point yeah. so that that's why i go oh, they're updating that facility again right. but the uh the idea is that once they update that they can use some of those arpa funds the federal dole out to actually build some of the sewers so that's that's the idea um, and the focus is also partly some of the priority focuses that they're dealing with is uh, obviously Eastern Coventry and getting some on that need to for the reasons why the study was done in the past in those areas, but also trying to deal with some of these cesspools that are around the lakes yeah. and storm and surface yeah. waters. Yeah. And that and that's something that's that a Tom passion is, of both yeah. of ours. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, I I went out with Envirothon, which is a um, environmental group at Coventry High School, and it exists throughout the state, many communities. And we tested and submitted data to um, URI for um, at all outfall locations all around the lake, and we did it uh, twice. And what we found is that we didn't have any point discharges. Hmm. We had a significant amount of bacteria mm -hmm. uh, that seem to be flowing in from everywhere. So what would that tell you? That would tell you it's not a point discharge coming from a drain. Right. It is a it is something coming from all of the massive soil that's draining into the lake. What would be causing that? There's only one thing that could cause that. <laughs> and and so no matter how I've like tonight there's a sewer board meeting mm -hmm. that I'm supposed to be at. Uh, but I'm here. And, you know, Jamie LeBlanc would like me to be on that board also. Um, I, and I'm really, it, it is like a super hot button for me. I don't understand how that couldn't be our, that should be our number one hit in Coventry. Um, I don't know how, how much you all know about developments like this, but there was a, a study done in New Jersey uh, on, called the Pinelands. And what they found is any lot that's bigger than two acres will generally speaking not result in a pollutant load, appreciable pollutant load that would go into wetlands or any other sites. All of these lots are a lot bigger than that. That was the deal in Western Coventry. That's why it was established to be five acre zonings because some of it comes from this Pineland study that was done in New Jersey, which has similar soils to us. But in Eastern Coventry, we're looking at lots of 3,000 square feet. It, you cannot have a three bedroom house with a septic system and say, yeah. and say, oh, you're treated fine out on the exterior of your property. Right. It doesn't work. So it's my hot button. Yep. And uh, right. so I just, I need you to know that before, I mean, really before I'm getting involved in this well, I think you and Tom are battling yeah. out for the hot button. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's one of mine. Probably have other ones. Too, that's one of them. Yeah. Future agenda items. Uh, there's a comp plan um, public meeting coming up sometime in October. I'd encourage members to attend that. It's not really a future agenda item, but as a as a uh, there, there could be Tom's on the oh, you mean, advisor you mean the, the actual, yeah, I think it'd be good yeah. for the group to show up, but I do think that as the, as um, Tom's part of the technical advisory committee, so he knows what I'm talking about, but there's, there's um, stuff that's starting to roll out with regard to drafts of the plan. And I think it would be good to, um, for folks to um, 
take a look at the to that. Did I forward to you folks before Jerry was on board the chapters of the plan? You did, did. It? okay. Or so I'm not crazy. Sorry, All right. but I've and, I, and you may have been and you may have been copied on that at the same time frame before with the anticipation of you coming on. But I promise you, I didn't. Um, know Lisa's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I promise you, Lisa, Lisa's taking some looks. So. So uh, we got the more important. The goals are starting to come together, and it's amazing yeah. how many of the goals are directly related to what we want to talk about. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's it, it's a it will be a a, a big guiding path. For, yeah. It's it's really for important for you guys forward. to plug yourselves into that. As you know, Jerry, the town hasn't had a plan for almost twenty years. Long time. And that's that to me as a planner, that's unconscionable. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> it does right. make sense. Right. This beautiful town, which has some real cool assets. Yeah. Mm, just yeah. So that's that's right. for me is I'll constantly say that until it yep. gets going. So I'll uh, uh Tom, I would I would love it if you would take your data stream of those triggers mm -hmm. and Put those in a checklist. A checklist. I, I would love that. to yeah. do. Uh, I would love to a, do a, a plan the next time a, a good one comes up. You know, like this one's not a good one because this one's simple. But and go through that. I think that would be so cool. I, I, it's yeah. impressive as hell the ideas you came up with because the, it can be such a good way to not skip something important. I, it, well, it sounds like you have that list because you look at the plan and you say well is there a landscaping plan in there did they deal with the trees did they do, right. did they put these there, in there, there are, did they there do are this? checklists they that do we that? have and but i yeah. literally take the regs and i just i look i like i put the checklist aside and i have the regs in front of me and i just go okay. right through them but we'll to just, see we'll if things that. apply we'll but yeah we'll do that it's, it's like such that. a great way to take um i'm sure you can tell already i have my my like, I have some juice for things yeah. and you know I have to I have to be able to say them and other people have to be able to say no Jerry that's not where we're going and just okay doesn't fit yeah. and I'll bet you someone's done it before I bet you wouldn't have to recreate the wheel on some of that well, I'll go back to some of the materials I mean, you could, that, uh, you could, that you, you know, gave me so yeah and I'm start. I'm a member of the American Planning Association, so there if there may be something that they have out there that says, "Oh, here are the key things that you know. Right. Here's the checklist you should right. be using." To, yeah. <laughs> well, we can start with right. that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. And just go from that, and absolutely. then we'll be able to whittle it down. Right. You know, um, I didn't hear anybody talk about the um, uh, what is it called when you do a big development environmental site impact statement? Impact statement. Yeah, yes. But like. I didn't see that on your checklist. Um, yeah, and I was just thinking about it. This, this, it, this is nothing. This right. doesn't. But like when you get a 32 lot development, mm -hmm. there, there can be massive impacts. And it's very difficult for a commission to get to, to really understand all of those problems. But you can when you get in when you recommend an environmental impact statement um that takes it out of our hands mm -hmm. and it comes back from a professional organization right. that looks at it and says here yeah. are the impacts that we saw yeah what do we call it on our regs the um what is it called i know it. we used to require it on big developments uh, environmental team review that's what we call it in our regs, and it was but, but the else. but the at the federal level, it's it's environmental impact statement EIS. Um, environmental but site but that's but we do that. It's it, that's the what it's called in our yeah. zoning. Do you require that for all developments? It's required if I if in my judgment they require one. So that's like in this good. particular instance, right. I, I don't really think so. But if the, and I my guess is that the last few planning directors didn't require those things. I think there's definitely some developments that should have. We um, used to require it as a commission. Yeah, we require That makes it. sense, yep. yep. And, uh, but there, but you, maybe you could be taking the format of it yeah. and applying it to, to right. your group. So. And I, that would be helpful to me, right. yeah. Okay. It, it's a, it was a powerful tool. 
Um, think about getting a development with a hundred lots, roads all over the place, changing slopes, cuts and fills of 20 excessive feet. Like if you go up to Old North Road, uh, looking at the potential for sliding action because of the soil compaction ratios don't meet the specifications, all of these things. And I have some expertise in that, but I don't know if you all do. And I'm telling you right now, those are the things that you just ship right off for an environmental site assessment and you let them come back and tell you because they're more of experts on it. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's wicked powerful. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah, so. and that will help the town engineer too. Absolutely. Right. He'll he'll like be like, oh, these guys have their stuff together. Yep. They know what they're talking about. This is a big development. Yep. Next question. All right. We'll take 7.2 uh, decision to become membership next month when we meet. You'll have the opportunity to take a look at the website in the meantime and uh, who some of the members are and some of the materials that they have. And did you table your minutes? I wasn't really listening at the beginning. We tabled the minutes because, because, because we didn't have yep. a, Just making um, sure. Yep. Okay. So that's a next meeting agenda item. Uh, public comment. I haven't seen anybody up there. On no, the not on that. Right. All right. Then if, I move, I make, if this okay. continues to happen this way, it might be good to just do your meetings here, still Zoom record them and make them available. But the last, what, three meetings, I don't think we've had one individual on. This is in terms of this is we do it live. Yeah. So um if, you just tape it and then yeah because i know that they're like the sewer committee that we're kind of doing competing for the actual the live accounts that we have here oh, there's, there's okay. only a couple of them so yeah. i'm not saying we shouldn't do it but i'm just saying it, it in if we're not really getting anybody i, I don't want to use up you know the bandwidth or whatever the terms are to uh to do that we'll just record it and then it'd be available for folks to listen to should they choose to i'm actually a little disappointed because i thought one of the association members would be on the meeting just to Give yep. me a hard time. Yep. Well, we can no. be, <laughs> well, we can keep it going and no. but just as a thought. So okay, then I motion we adjourn. I second it. All right. Thank you very much you. for help and guidance and thoughts.